Meeting House of Provincetown, where we affirm the inherent worth and dignity of every person, and where we support each other on our spiritual search for truth and meaning, and any tech difficulties we may encounter. Thank you for the stellar worship team this morning. We're getting there. My name is Reverend Kate Wilkinson, and I'm so glad that you have joined us this morning. Welcome to those of you in the room, and welcome to those of you joining us via our live stream. Before we begin our worship service, I have just a few announcements to share. Great music on Sundays at 5 is today. This concert is called Frets and Hammers, Bach and Beyond. You have a little sneak preview here on the stage because it features Aaron Largett Kaplan on guitar, Fred Jodry on harpsichord and organ, and John Thomas on piano. So we hope you can come back for that at five o'clock. Another reminder that our water communion service is the Sunday after Labor Day. So please start collecting a small amount of water from a favorite water source for that communal ritual. Coffee Hour will be on our lawn today. We hope that those of you who are here in person can linger a while under the tent. And then on Tuesday evening at 5 o'clock, we'll have our online Coffee Hour on Zoom. So let us know if you need that link. This morning's service is a follow-up service to one we had a few weeks ago called Good Enough. But don't worry, you don't have to have watched the original to appreciate the sequel. <laughs> Let us continue by affirming our community's covenant. I invite you to repeat each line after me. Love is the spirit of this meeting house. Love is the spirit of this meeting house. This is our great covenant. This is our great covenant. To dwell, together in peace, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, seek the truth in love and to help one another. <clears throat> At this time, I invite Ellen to light our chalice for us. As we light our chalice here in the sanctuary, I invite those of you watching from home to light a candle wherever you are. In that way, we can feel connected even while we are apart. Alice Lighting, Daybreak, by Robin F. Gray. Day breaks on our gratitude for family and friends, for the freedom to find our own truth, for the company of those who gather here, and the promises we offer one another. Let the light of day bring the grace of faith into our lives. Please join me now in a spirit of meditation and prayer. You have a joy or a sorrow on your heart this morning. You are welcome to light a silent candle during the prayer or at any time during the service at the table to the right of the pulpit. And there is a journal there to record your thoughts and prayers. Spirit of life. Spirit of love and grace. 
in these dwindling summer days, may we be reminded to appreciate each taste of sweetness. Each ripe tomato, each ear of local corn, each flaming sunset, each connection with a visiting friend. May we look at our overgrown gardens and be grateful for abundance. May we look at our overgrown lives and be grateful for the messiness that still somehow sustains us. May we look at our broken places and see the scar tissue beginning healing. We are miracles of mending. Let us sit in the gentleness of this moment as we appreciate all that is our lives. May we be present to the fullness of this hour, this day, this life. Amen. Keep it simple, by Chuck Pyle. Well, I woke up this morning to this meeting in my head. My ego had formed a terrorist group, and I knew what lay ahead. There'd be death threats on my confidence and extortions in my heart, and I'd have to remain in control so as not to fall completely apart. So I called my new age girlfriend up, she helped herself for years, and asked her how to overcome all my unrest and inner fears. She said, force would drive it deeper. I needed to love my fear away. She sounded so together, I was kind of ashamed to be afraid. So I called my local talk show, Radio Therapist of the Air, she told me to write myself little love notes and paste them everywhere. She said it was not so good to be ashamed and I should get therapy or maybe meditate. Right then I realized I felt guilty of being ashamed of being afraid. <laughs> she said thank you for sharing and put me on hold. I got right off the line because I knew she was tracing the call. So 
I said, I know I'm in there, right? And I walked over to the mirror to see. If I don't come out with my hands up, I said, I'm coming in after me. I, I know my inner child's enraged, but all my outer man can say is that I'm angry, that I feel guilty, that I'm ashamed of being afraid. Well, right about then, my committee kicked in. And there I was in the streets of Boulder, Colorado, center of the known self-help universe. Where not being totally present, well, a guy could get busted for that. <laughs> so I called this 12-step cowboy friend of mine I thought might maybe know just why I was so crazed these days like this psycho desperado. He took me to his support group. I shared about my rage. They said, everyone's addicted to anger these days. It's really all the rage. <laughs> I said, you mean I'm addicted to being angry for feeling guilty? That I'm ashamed of being afraid? He said, yep, and started to walk away. And did he say, God be with you? I'm kind of hard of hearing. He might have said, God, you're pitiful. <laughs> so I said, hey, what about keep it simple? He said, easy does it. I said, what about let go and let God? He said, well, one day at a time. So I said, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that just might take a while to change. Thank you, thank you. That was Keep It Simple by Chuck Powell, also known as the Zen Cowboy, and Ellen Anthony, also known as our Zen worship host. Yeehaw. <laughs> Now is the time in our service where we take a collection for the ongoing support of this meeting house and our shared ministry. As we enjoy a musical reflection, we welcome your donations here in the sanctuary or online through PayPal or Venmo. You can find that information on our website, uumh.org. On and off site, your offerings will now be gratefully received. <coughs>
Maybe some of you have heard of the meditation app called Headspace. It's a great place for help with meditation, sleep, stress, and mindfulness. And we're familiar with that term, right? Headspace. If we're having a bad day and we're frazzled and moody, we might say, I'm just not in a good headspace right now. But there's another way of looking at it, which is that we only have a certain amount of headspace. There's a finite amount of room in our brains, and so to some extent, we need to divvy up how it gets used. Now, to be clear, this is not a scientific discourse at all, okay? Sometimes I do use genuine brain science in these sermons, but this time it's more of a metaphorical, hypothetical situation. We have a finite amount of headspace, and so we have to be judicious about what takes up room in there. With only so much room, some things have to go. Now, a lot of this may seem totally outside of our control. For instance, finish this jingle with me. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Why does that get to live in there? <laughs> so, no, we don't have total control over our headspace. But we do have influence. There's a lot of stuff that I would like to exercise from my head. Get rid of the useless jingles, wrong turns that now seem familiar, so I take them again. But the very first thing that I would like to go is my committee. Do any of you remember that old Loretta LaRoche skit where she talks about how we all have a committee in our heads? I think that's so true. A gathering of people that seem to exist to criticize, doubt, and undermine our self-confidence. They ask questions like, do you really know what you're talking about? And is that? what you're wearing? <laughs> and they make harmful comments like, they only hang out with you because they have to, or because you have money, or because they feel bad for you. The committee members take turns saying, I can't believe you said that the other day. No, don't stop thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. Keep thinking about it. And one of them says, you're such an imposter. What if people knew what you were really like? It's interesting who populates the committee. We could name some of the members, couldn't we? Our parents our neighbors, but also that mean teacher from the second grade, the cool girls from the seventh grade, the editor of Vogue magazine, the man behind us in line at the grocery store yesterday who we kind of got into it with. And our head committees have a rotating chair. Because sometimes one voice is stronger than the others. I wish we could elect the chair of the committee ourselves. Because then we might select our best friend or a supportive, wise grandparent. Oprah, maybe. <laughs> but instead, the committee chair volunteers. And it's not usually who we would choose. It's not even someone we would usually listen to if they weren't talking in our head like that. There's a great saying that goes, never listen to criticism from someone you'd never go to for advice. <laughs> so it's good to ask ourselves when the critiques arise, 
Is that voice in our head our conscience? Is it the voice of someone we admire, whose opinion we value? Is it guiding us to a higher path with its challenges? Or is that voice in our head our committee piping up? Is it the voice of someone who doesn't like us for some reason that probably has more to do with them than with us? Is it someone whose opinion isn't trustworthy or who shouldn't have power over us anymore? Is it the voice of a theology we no longer subscribe to or a belief system that we have outgrown? These voices have long echoes. The expectations of others are strong, strong, strong. How do we disentangle ourselves? In his poem, Song of Myself, Walt Whitman writes, trippers and askers surround me People I meet, the effect upon me of my early life, or the ward and city I live in, or the nation, the latest dates, discoveries, inventions, societies, authors old and new, my dinner, dress, associates, looks, compliments, dues, the real or fancied indifference of some man or woman I love, the sickness of one of my folks or of myself, or ill-doing, or loss, or lack of money, or depressions, or exaltations, battles, the horrors of fratricidal war, the fever of doubtful news, the fitful events, these come to me days and nights and go from me again. But they are not the me, myself. The me, myself. What would that voice say? That still small voice within? I really worry about kids growing up today with so much social media. The voices around them are never silent. Forget the committee inside their head. They have a committee of thousands on Instagram. They are constantly comparing themselves to others too, but it is this curated version of others' lives that they are up against, not reality. And it's very stressful to be keeping up with the Joneses when the Joneses are in your face every second of every day with their perfectly angled selfies. <laughs> and we adults are not immune to the pressure of the social media committee either, are we? This idea of the committee is sometimes used in AA or other places, to give a name to the ubiquitous self-doubt that plagues so many of us. That inner dialogue of those voices not quite our own. They have a real impact on our life. At the very least, we are distracted by them. At the very worst, they become a destructive force in our lives that feed our shame and starve our joy. Melissa Broder is a writer whose career really took off when she began a Twitter account called So Sad Today. She details her struggles with anxiety and depression in entries of 140 characters or less. Here's one that I really like from June 2016. Don't obsess about it. Yeah, okay, thanks, you fixed me. <laughs> she 
She also has a collection of longer essays in a book also called So Sad Today. One of her essays is entitled, Honk If There's a Committee in Your Head Trying to Kill You. <laughs> when I'm sleeping, the committee stays up all night and then greets me at dawn with really bad ideas, she writes. It's like, good morning, everything is horrible, time to act impulsively. But first, let's start by getting into fights with imaginary people from the past. Next, let's catalog everything that's wrong with you and your life. And I want to remind you of everything you don't have and everything you should be scared of losing. Let's begin. The committee covers a lot of territory, doesn't it? In the Harry Potter series, yes, I take seriously the Unitarian Universalist idea that all texts can be sacred texts. In the Harry Potter series, there are these characters called Dementors, which I told you a few weeks ago were based on the author's own internal struggles with depression. They are soul-sucking creatures that drain you of your power. The magic that is used against them is to think of the happiest memory you can. It's basically thought replacement therapy. Thought replacement is a technique that some of us use to help with the intrusive negative thoughts and worry that accompany panic attacks. The basic idea is to interrupt an unwanted negative thought and replace it with a neutral or a positive one. Now in Harry Potter there's also something called a Patronus involved, but I won't geek out on you too much today. There's one more character in Harry Potter that is relevant to today, which is called a Bogart. A Bogart is a shape-shifting, ghost-like creature that takes on the form of its observer's worst fear, whatever you're most afraid of. And the more generally fearful a person is, the more susceptible they will be to Bogarts. Now the magic that defeats Bogarts is a little different than the magic used on Dementors. It is to take away their power by making fun of them. If you are able to laugh at the Bogart, it will disappear. Using the incantation, Ridiculous! And your magic wand, you can force the Bogart to assume a less threatening and hopefully comical form. Neville Longbottom, a particularly anxious young wizard, is instructed to picture the Bogart wearing his grandmother's clothes. And that seems to work. So how do we disempower our committee? How do we silence the chorus of negative, self-sabotaging, critical voices that we carry around in our heads? The ones that tell us that we're not good enough, that we are an imposter, a loser, a jerk, that we don't deserve good things, that we're not capable of recovery or healing, that we're not slim or smart or interesting enough. The first step is to become aware when our committee is talking instead of our guiding inner voice. Awareness is basically the first step to everything, right? So first we acknowledge this chorus and we don't just accept it as the perpetual background noise to our day. We become conscious of the voices and what they are saying to us. Just doing this reduces their power somewhat because they are no longer unconsciously ruling our thoughts. Dr. Rob, an addictions counselor with Next Stage Recovery, suggests saying to each negative voice, Thanks for sharing. 
As we say thank you for sharing over and over to all these negative voices, he says, they begin to lose their power and their volume. We can begin to insert rational statements by the true self, rebuttals to the negative statements and positive affirmations to replace them. Just like Harry Potter conjuring up his happiest memory, we can conjure up the best thing that we know about ourselves and speak it into the Dementor's deep void Remember these, I am enough, I am beautiful, I am loved. Those work. Or how about, I am a good friend, I am a good son, I am a good person, my love is beautiful. I cannot do everything and that's okay. It gets better. Tomorrow is a new day. It also helps to take periodic breaks from social media, get off that comparison hamster wheel for a day, Without all that background noise, listen for your own voice. Now, as I was reading a few sources for this sermon, I learned a great new name for this committee in our heads, which is leading me to use a swear word for the second time in worship this summer. But it's just too good not to. And it might help you, this new committee name, to take some of its power away. It's like dressing our committee in our grandmother's clothes, but instead we're going to rename it. Great, so cover your ears. The new name is the Itty Bitty Shitty Committee. <laughs> here on out to save me from cursing again. The IBSC convenes each day in our head and elects a leader. And that voice gets to be the loudest that day. But you know what? We don't have to believe it. We don't even have to listen to it. Because it's itty, and it's bitty, and it's, well, you know, it's not accurate and it's not serving us well. My family is friends with twin sisters who my sister met in college, Chris and Meredith Thompson. They are folk singers, and their voices blend magically in the way only twin sisters' voices could. I also love their lyrics. It's been years since I've heard them play in person, but sometimes I still think about and listen to their songs. There's one about the old man in the mountain coming down that I think about whenever I drive through Franconia Notch in New Hampshire. And there's one I think about when I'm trying to get someone out of my head. When one of those committee voices is really strong and it's pulling me away from the person I'd like to be. It's a song called The List. It was written about an ex-boyfriend. I'm not sure of which twin. And I don't know why they broke up or how long they'd been broken up for. But he was on her committee for sure. Lately on my mind is this long list of worries. It begins, you know, it's been getting me down. And it goes on to talk about how it's hard to get an ex out of your mind, especially if they are the one who left you. You can't stop thinking about them worrying about what they didn't see in you, or did see in you. It can zap your confidence, get in the way of forming new relationships, get in the way of your relationship with yourself. 
The song lists the worries that plague her, including the ex-boyfriend. But my favorite part is the chorus. It goes, but I'm proud to tell you this. I've crossed you off the list. You're off the list. In the coming weeks, if one of those committee voices starts getting too loud in your head, the one telling you you're not good enough, or real enough, thin enough, or smart enough, the one telling you to catalog everything that's wrong with you and your life, the one reminding you of everything you don't have, and everything you should be scared of losing. If one of those voices is getting really loud, remember that they don't deserve your headspace. They haven't earned it, and they don't have a right to it. It's not easy, I'm not just saying, don't obsess about it. But we do have some power to evict these thoughts, worries, and voices, even if it takes a long time, even if we may need some help getting there. And we have some tools to draw upon, thanks to Harry Potter, and Twitter, and AA, and folk music. We can use thought replacement, counter that negative voice with something positive that we know to be true, and to say it over and over again each time that negative voice chimes in. Or we can diminish the voice's power by making fun of it. I hear you, IVSC. Thanks for sharing. But you're itty, and you're bitty, and you're and you look ridiculous in my grandmother's clothes. <laughs> and finally, if we feel ready to banish that voice for good, to fire it from our committee, we can sing to ourselves the chorus of Chris and Meredith's song. And I'm proud to tell you this, I've crossed you off the list. You're off the list. You can do this, friends, and this community is here to support you on your journey. May the harmful voices be quieted. May the social media images stop scrolling through your minds. And may your own voice grow stronger each day. Amen. And blessed be. become our practice to pose a question based on the theme of the service each week. It can be a topic of sharing out on the lawn today or with friends during the week. If you want to delve deeper into this conversation, we hope you can join us Tuesday at 5 at our Zoom coffee hour. Our question this week is, who is on your committee? When you hear that critical inner voice, whose voice is it? Who is on your committee? Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Go in peace.